Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Akim, of course, call Haloyim, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rechak, Wadash, that were honest to the apostles and elders, a great millstone that rule in Tiswell. Peace and Shalom to the Akim out there and the elect, which the elect consists of the men, women, and children selected to make it out of here from the coming nuclear destruction, all right? I'm the brother Zion Allah, the DC camp, coming at you with another video. It's basically a land back from the uh, big bro, the uh, elder, Manat Zagba, in GMS, South Carolina, 8. We touched on aspects of the one-third and two-third from a question, okay? And a lot of times when we say two-third, we even do it to this day. You'll hear brothers say, you're of the two-thirds, you're of the two-thirds. A lot of times when brothers say that, we say that uh, because the two-thirds is associated with being destroyed. Because you do know the two-thirds, according to the scriptures, are going to be destroyed, all right? A lot of them, majority of them, by what? Thermonuclear destruction. Okay, they're going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. That's the two thirds. Okay, all right. So, a lot of times when we say two thirds, especially brothers in different countries, when they say two thirds, it's associated with what a person is going to be destroyed. But when you go into it, like the elder went into, and like the um, the apostles went into before, and other brothers went into before, when you go into it, it's only talking about one particular land mass, it's dealing with a particular landmass all right as a matter of fact let's go ahead and get um zechariah 13 in verse 8 and it says and it shall come to pass that in all the land save the lord two parts therein shall be cut off and die see in all the land of oh, save the lord salakia two parts okay shall be cut off and die but the third shall be left therein so you have three parts of this it's three parts of a whole Okay, you have two parts, two thirds, and then the one part left over, right? That's where we, that's where we get the two thirds and one thirds from is from the scripture. So it's saying two parts shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Verse nine, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. Who's the uh, um, them that's going to be refined as silver and gold? That's the elect. All right. Nine times out of ten, most Akim say that in the introduction of their videos to the elect, to the elect, those that are selected, right? All right I like to say those that are uh, selected from the coming nuclear destruction, right? The elect, those are the ones that's going to be delivered, right? You see? And also, you have uh, ones that are scattered around the globe that are also going to be delivered, and they're going to also be a part of that elect, but remember... The one third and two third is associated with what those being here in America. The two thirds are going to be destroyed here. The majority, you know, of Israel, two thirds going to be destroyed here, and the one third is going to be delivered out of here. Okay, right? Again, you have to put the difference between the one third, two third, and then the rest around the globe as well, right? And it says, um. And I will bring them, bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my power. You see that? So it's talking about a particular place. Okay. This particular place is still mentioned throughout the scriptures. When you go to Revelation, the 18th chapter, Babylon is fallen. You see the title. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Why? Because that's what happened after Babylon, after the thermonuclear destruction hit. You see? That's what happened. After the thermonuclear destruction hit, okay, now you have um, this place being a habitation of devils, okay? Unclean, uh, unclean spirits to include uh, um, what are those scavenger animals and creatures, okay? Those are going to be ones that's going to inhabit this land after the great destruction, okay? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth. Or wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Who hasn't been made um, rich or has some money off of Babylon? Okay. 
Everybody's trying to come here. Everybody's trying to visit here. Okay. It, it goes around like it's the greatest country on earth. You see, uh, even the Northern tribes, they're constantly trying to escape to cross the border to get back into a land that was already theirs, by the way, you see, that was stolen from them. But nonetheless, they're trying to cross the border to get back into this land because they believe that they can make a better life and opportunity here. You see that? A lot of people uh, uh, look at look at places like uh, Alibaba. You know, they they make a ton of money. People make a ton of money, a ton of money off of them. You see, uh, grabbing items from over there and selling it on Walmart and on uh, uh, Amazon. You see, all right. And the fornication part. What a lot of nations have uh, taken according to uh, America's ideologies. You see. In doctrines okay all right that's what it means by committed fornication with her okay all right and wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies it says verse 4 and I heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins it's still talking about her come out of her my people that you be not partakers of her sins that her is Babylon you see and that you receive not of her plagues. So the great destruction is talking about the land of Babylon. That's where the, uh, the majority of people are going to be destroyed. Is there going to be people destroyed outside of America? Absolutely. The land of Israel is going to be destroyed. Okay. Because this current state, how it is, it cannot be like that when the Israelites come back down to go into that area to rule. It has to be completely wiped out because it's complete wickedness over there. You, you've read Isaiah, the first chapter, it says strangers devour it, devour it in your presence. That's our land over there. But right now it's not. It has to be refreshed. Okay. Destroyed and then brought back up. All right. So is there going to be other places uh, somewhat destroyed? Absolutely. But the main one is talking about in America. Right. And it says, uh, come out of her, my people. That's the elect. Okay. That's, that's one third coming out of her, my people. Okay. And she be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues, that destruction for her sins have reached unto heaven and the most high have remembered her iniquities, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works and the cup, which she had filled, filled to her double. Yes. It's going to be a double portion of destruction coming down upon America. Okay. And America is a land. But you know the people who's running America, the Edomites, okay? Edom is also associated with America. Even in the kingdom, they're going to be rewarded double for what they have done to us. How much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. She's basically saying I'm going to rule forever. I'm not going to see no sorrow. Nobody's going to mess with us. We got the greatest uh, military might in the whole world. Nothing can stop us. People and people living in America are talking about prospering. They're still talking about another 10, another 20 years from now. Okay. Okay. Because they believe they have faith in America. They believe in America. That's why they're able to talk like that. Okay. And it says, um, Verse 8, therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. That's why I wanted to get and read down to verse 8. She shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is Yahweh power who judges her. See that? So this links up with the place of great destruction, thermal nuclear destruction. That's that. One third and two parts therein shall be utterly what burned up with fire. Okay. All right. So let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, Jeremiah 16. Okay. Even when you go to Jeremiah 16 and verse 14 and 15, it says, therefore, behold, the days come, say of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Yes, because 
the Lord is going to gather his elect from the four corners of the globe. That's that's a given. It says that throughout the scriptures. Matthew 24, Mark 13. The Lord's coming back. He's sending Yahweh Shai back to gather the elect. Okay? But when it comes to the one-third and two-third, that's going to be out of America, a.k.a. the land of the north. That's why it's, it says what? From the land of the north. Right? It says, um, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So if everybody's going to be saved or delivered, how are they going to get a land that wasn't given unto their fathers? Because the fathers is talking about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes. Okay? It wasn't given to the other nations. So how can the other nations be given a land that wasn't theirs, that was promised to their fathers? You can't be adopted into that. Okay, the adoption, if any adoption is taking place, the adoption is talking about Israelites. Okay, that's the adoption. It says that in Romans, the ninth chapter. Okay, right? But it says the land of the north. Let's go to that. Let's go to this. Let's look up that word north. All right. Let's get some Hebrew for today. That's a Taza, Pa, Wa, and Na. Taza, Pawan. Tazapawan, north of direction, northward, north, northward. Okay? All right, so sometimes you got to go to the uh, uh, lexicons, okay? So let's go to, let me go back, the Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. We're going to go to that one. And you can see it says right here, the Northland. See that? Babylonia. All right? So it's not just a direction when it says the land of the north or north land, north country, that's often associated with Babylon. Okay, that's Babylonia. And it says, after it says the word here, right, it'll say Zechariah 2 and 10. And then the other scripture says Jeremiah what? Right here. Jeremiah, after you see that right here, right? Babylonia, Zechariah 2 and 10. Right next to it, you see Jeremiah. Jeremiah what? 16 and 15. Look at that. See? Babylonia, which is a.k.a. New Babylon. Babylon the Great. That's the land of the north that it's talking about. You see that? And sometimes you just got to do further study. That's okay. All right? The land of the north is talking about Babylon. Is it talking about ancient Babylon? Absolutely not. It's talking about New Babylon. Okay? The daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. A.K.A. the now name America. You see that? And we have to consider this this as well. Let's, let's go to um, Shalakia. Let's go to uh, Revelation 21 and 1. A new heaven and new earth. Okay? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. It had to be freshened up. Okay, the way it was under the current rule, it couldn't be like that no more, especially not for Yahweh Shai's kingdom. Okay, and those that are joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. Okay, we cannot have the earth the way it is. It's going to be a new heaven, a refreshed and vamped up earth. Okay, and new heaven is a rulership, right? And it says, um, for the first, because look, everything under the heaven, see, when you go back to the blessings. Even Esau had, what, everything under the heaven, right? So heaven represents a rulership, okay? And I saw a new heaven, a refreshed rulership, and what, a new earth, a refreshed earth, a new and improved heaven and earth. For the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from the Most High out of heaven, Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband because we are beautiful being delivered and coming back. That that sight, us coming back down from those chariots back onto the earth to rule is a beautiful sight. It's an incredible sight. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay? And you know if it's coming out of the scriptures, that ain't nothing light. It's a beautiful, see, we, you know, 
A woman in her order is supposed to be beautiful, man. Okay? In her order, she's supposed to be beautiful, especially one that fear if you how about you know shy and, and uh, serves her husband. That's supposed to be a beautiful woman. Okay? So how much more so when the Lord's referring to this new Jerusalem as a woman? Okay? All right? Prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. So we're going to come back down to everything being refreshed. Why? Because nuclear missiles has hit the places where it was supposed to hit in America is no more. Right? But when we come back down, what? We have to establish rule. Right? When we come back down, you're going to have things like uh, Isaiah, the second chapter. Yahweh's universal reign. All right? The word of the, uh, Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Okay? The top of the governments. Okay? On earth. You're going to have the Lord's government on top of them. Okay? All right? The Lord's throne on top of these little thrones. And shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Yes, because when we come back down, we're going to be on something that the world has never seen before. All right? Beautiful and in power. Glorious, man. Just like in uh, Second Ezra's when it says, what are these? Right? What are these? Not who he say who are these. He said, what are these? That's how glorious we're going to be. Right? And we're going to come back down and all the nations are going to flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. This is in the kingdom. And it says the house of the God of Jacob. And it shows a separation. The other nations are going to say, let's go to the what? Mountain of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob. So where's this other nations being delivered with Israel? They're going to be there in the kingdom. People get it confused when we say other people ain't making it. They're not making it on them chariots. They're going to be, a lot of people are going to be destroyed. But guess what? It's going to be people on the earth. You're still going to have them come back through their people. Right? So the other nations are going to be in the kingdom of heaven. It's just, guess what? You, we're reading what you're going to do. They're going to go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and, and what? And he will teach us of his ways. The ways that you learn now, the ways that you know now on this earth, not good enough. The ways that you know now, terrible. Right? Not good enough. You have to be refreshed yourselves. The other nations have to be taught righteousness. And they're going to be taught that through the true rulers under Yahweh, why Yahweh shy. Right? And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path. See, you will walk in his paths. You will walk in our righteous paths. For out of Zion, okay, Israelites, okay, another name for Israel, to Zion, memorial, monument, shall go forth the law, which was given to Israel, okay, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, okay, which Jerusalem is another name for Israel. Right? And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords and the plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. No more war. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Which shows you that this didn't happen yet. Which shows you that the real people are waiting to be put into their land. Which shows you there's some bullshit going on on the planet Earth. If you know what I'm talking about, it's some pretenders on the planet Earth because this didn't happen yet. Right. So guess what? When we're in power, they're going to all come back to us. Now, you know, we're jumping precept upon precept. Now we're going to go to Isaiah, the 14th chapter for this aspect of it. Right. Because I'm land backing off the big bros video. Isaiah 14 and 1 for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Yashar Allah. And set them in their own land. They're being set in our own land again. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. That strangers is talking about Israelites. We always go through this. Because that lets you know. That it's not just going to be one third and two third. When dealing with Israel. You're going to have a surrounding number. Of Israelites that's still going to be left. On the earth. 
because the whole earth is now going to be destroyed. So you're going to have Israelites that are in other parts of the globe that didn't get delivered. Okay, because they wasn't elected to get delivered by way of chariot. Okay, right? So it says, you go. Because if it was this one third and two third, what about this aspect? What about these strangers? Okay, which are Israelites, as we know. Now it's Gar, all right, of foreigners in Israel, though conceded rights, all right, alien. Sojourner, stranger, which we know that Gar deals with what? Israelite strangers, strangers, right? Another another way how you know that is when you go to, um, you can back this up with Exodus, I believe the 12th chapter, right? Let me see. Join with the synonymous of stranger on the laws of Moses, okay? Shepherd appear to be foreign shepherds and nomadic tribes. Such, what do you say? Because this is my first time looking at this particular one. Their flocks and lands, such as Hebrews, have formerly been in the land of Canaan. Let me see. All right. Just wanted to get that, just to see. Often joined with the uh, synonymous stranger on the laws of Moses. Okay. Now, an Israelite can be a stranger as well. And that's why in this thing you have to look up words, okay? You have it's, it's multiple words for stranger. You have Nakar, you have Gar, and you have um what's this so uh, what is that? What is that? Uh what is that? Sawar, if I'm not mistaken. Because he said I become an uh an alien to my own people. As a matter of fact, let me just look that up real quick. And that's King David said that. No, well, he said stranger. When you go into it, right? Stranger. Yeah. Zawar. Okay. So you have Gar, you have Nakar, and you have Zawar. All right. And sometimes when you go into in a Gar is an Israelite stranger or foreigner. Okay. Zawar can be both because, uh, King David said, I become a stranger to my own people. All right. But you know, King David is an Israelite, but he's actually been looked at as a stranger to his own people. And then you have Nakar, which is talking about the actual heathen. But sometimes you have to get precept upon precept to break that Nakar down, because sometimes that can be talking about Israelites. But again, this thing is of what? Discernment. Right. So that word was Nawar, uh, Zawar. Right. So you have Gar. You have Zawar, you have Nakar, right? So, let's go to uh, Exodus. Exodus, the 12th chapter. All right. Ordinance of the Passover. See, and the Lord said unto Moses, verse 43, and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover, there shall no stranger eat thereof. So you go to uh, this stranger, See that? See that? The, this particular alien is not going to eat thereof. Nakar. Right? But a foreigner and a higher service should not eat thereof right there again. Let's see what this is. Alright. So this is a Sojourner Stranger. This is another one. Thawashab. 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 So a Thawashab is another word. So Thawashab and the hired servant, hired labor mercenary, okay. Sha, Ka, Ya, and Ra. Sha, Kayar, Sha, Kayar, okay. All right, so they're not going to eat thereof, right? Because they're obviously not Israelites, but guess what? When you go down, it says, verse 48. Verse 47, all the congregation of Israel shall keep it. Now, remember that all Israelites are going to keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover. See, before it said all Israel will keep it. So this particular stranger that's going to keep it will have to be an Israelite. Because Israelites will not keep company with uh, other nations that's going to keep the Passover. The other nations wouldn't keep the Passover. 
the Israelites wouldn't allow the other nations to keep the Passover. It has nothing to do with them. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. See, he shall be as one born in the land. So all this particular stranger is, is an Israelite that's born outside of the land of Israel. One law shall be to him that is home born. See, one home born. And unto the stranger that sojourneth among you, one that's not home born. You see, it doesn't, it's not talking about an actual heathen, right? When you go to this word stranger, all right, stranger, see there, is gar. See, the same word that we read in what? Isaiah 14 and 1, you see, right? But these things are spiritually discerned. All right. Now, when you go back to Isaiah 14 and 1, this particular strangers that's going to join with Israel, right? And the strangers shall be joined with them or the other Israelites that are left over and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Now, in verse 2, it says, and the people shall take them. Now, they're the, now that they have cleaved to the house of Jacob, they become the people now, right? The, the ones that were left over, the ones that uh, uh, left over, one third already been delivered. Okay, other Israelites that were selected to be delivered got delivered from various lands. Okay, two thirds got destroyed. Well, guess what? These particular ones, right? These particular Israelites, you have those that join unto that new Jerusalem that came down from heaven, right? And guess what? Their bodies would have to be changed because. Uh, uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Even on that aspect as well, we're going to be changed into new bodies. So you're not going to have Israelites in changed bodies and then have Israelites and still in their carnal fleshly bodies. And we both going to be in the kingdom of heaven. So the ones that's going to join unto the house and cleave unto the house of Jacob. Those are the ones that's going to be what they're going to repent and follow the program. Okay. In verse 2, and the people, now it's the people now, shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them. Okay, now it's the house of Israel telling you who the people are. The house of Israel shall possess them, the same as when it says, and the people shall take them. Those are synonymous. Possess them in the land of the Lord. Remember, the, the Lord is going to give us back and put us back in our land. So now we're going to possess a people in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. The Lord said he was going to deliver us and put us in our own land. We read a couple of scriptures on that. And guess what? Not only are we going to go to our own land, we're going to have what? Servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. You see that? So it's going to be hierarchy in the kingdom of heaven. You're going to have us being on top. And the other nations are going to be in subjection. You see that? But I got this for this point as well. Those particular Israelite strangers that's going to join to the house of Jacob, they're not classified in the one-third or the two-third. Because the one-third and the two-third are a part of the great destruction of Babylon. Land backing off with the big bro and other brothers and elders have said. Hope Akim out there have been edified. Call Haloyim. Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Kakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and Shalom to the elect as always. Double Shalom.